wishing you all a very happy Halloween. In the background, you can probably see something hanging on the wall. Something black and rectangular, hanging just like a normal picture would hang on the wall. But this is no ordinary picture. In fact, it's not really a picture at all. Sure, it's a glass clip frame, just like the standard glass clip frames you would buy from any form of art shop. Quite inexpensive, easy to get your hands on, quite innocuous. The sort of thing that anyone could have lying around the house. I guess the curiosity is to why it is blank. Why the only image, so to speak, in it is just a piece of cardboard, a piece of black cardboard. It's almost as if it's been chosen deliberately to, well, to create a, a mirror of sorts, but no ordinary mirror, a black mirror. A type of mirror that people have traditionally used throughout the centuries for the purposes of attempting to contact spirits. Now in this enlightened 21st century we can quite simply say that there is no hard and fast objective proof of any form of spiritual being at all. And that would be a fact. But from time to time some strange things do seem to occur. What they mean we just can't say. And the type of strange experiences in question can be very diverse. What I propose to do tonight on this Halloween weekend is to use the dark mirror the way that people do traditionally to try and contact an apparent spirit being. As a rational and reasonably scientific individual I know full well that any experiences that I may have will only be proof of one thing and that is that it is possible to have some strange experiences under some circumstances that is all nothing more nothing less and the type of experience which I am planning on generating is a persistence of vision hallucination. Just like if you were to gaze into a candle frame for a while and then look away, there would be a little blob in your vision, roughly the same shape and size of the candle itself. And the same thing can happen with uh, reflections of different sizes, shapes, forms. And if you are so inclined, you could put yourself into a meditative state, maybe, to concentrate on another image, to will it to appear. And maybe, just maybe, that bit of illuminated area would turn into something that is similar to or representative of that thing that you are calling forth. What I'm going to do is to place some forms of illumination around the dark mirror so that they will illuminate my face and I will gaze into the dark mirror itself. Thus, there will be a shape reflected back, the shape of my own face, to the exclusion of everything else. And I will choose to call forth a certain character from fiction to see whether it is possible to call this character forward. The character is the Hessian, the headless horseman from a certain story entitled Sleepy Hollow. You may have heard of it or possibly even watched the movie of the same name. I read the story a little while ago. It went into the characters in quite great detail. And the mystery of the horseman was kind of intriguing to say the least. In the name of the Creator and Master of the Universe, and by His powers, I am protected. I summon the forward headless horse from Hessian. Come here, it's Halloween weekend. Let me feel thy presence. Let me see thy face. Now, to do that, 
difficult piece of video for me to set up for you because I want to try and get the effects for myself. Now, when I'm doing a Ouija board seance, I can share that with you. The outcome of where the planchette lands, you can see that on camera, not a problem. But when I'm doing a dark mirror experiment, it's very different. It's only to do with me and what I'm seeing and sensing and feeling. So trying to share that is difficult. Now, what I've done, just bear with me a second, please. I set up on my desk the dark mirror there, just beneath um, the lamp, just resting against the lampshade itself. Uh, candles here, candles there, they helped a lot. And whilst I was shooting, I had that, which is just a small torch, uh, providing extra illumination so that you could see my face, okay? And otherwise, I don't think you'd be able to see my face properly just by the candlelight and the mirror itself. Um, so from your point of view, it was rather difficult. From my standpoint, as someone who was actually there and doing the experience itself, the word bizarre would be descriptive of what actually happened. The more I did the meditation work and the more religious aspects of the whole thing, the more a feeling which could only be regarded as being eerie kind of like came over me. It's uh, like um, it, a slightly heightened state of awareness. You're, you're in total darkness, or more or less total darkness. There was no real noises around you at all. And so your senses naturally a little more heightened anyway. You've got this atmosphere which you've managed to generate with candles, with using the dark mirror itself, and you're calling upon a, a basically a grisly demon from fiction. It does something to your mood, okay? It was rather uncanny in its own right. Maybe I shouldn't have actually done this wearing a, a light coloured top, because the light from the candles bounced off my face. I could see my face's reflection in the mirror itself. But I could also see the reflection from my white coloured top, including the dark bands around the neck. The more I went into it, you know, I got the persistence of vision effects again on the face and of course on the top half of my body. But the bit where my face went, kind of like went I had to all intents and purposes during the experience um, see myself become headless. I lost the persistence of vision blob which one would normally associate with this type of experience. It was not there where the face goes, but it was there where the shoulders go. But I can tell you it was very, very strange.